$46,000 is no small sum of money, but this Mustang makes 486 horsepower, almost 500 horsepower for that amount. And to illustrate how good of a straight line performer this car really is, we're going to pit it up against this Volkswagen Golf R, which is also a $46,000 car, and it's also a fantastic performer. So let's see how these two plus one extra competitor do in this quarter mile drag race. First up, we have the Mustang versus the Volkswagen. And this race might be more interesting than you'd expect because both of these cars have a zero to 60 rating from the manufacturers of just over four seconds. So pretty similar there, but I know this Mustang is in its element here at the drag strip because I've got the famous five liter Coyote V8. This one makes 486 horsepower, six extra because I've got the active exhaust on this and it sounds fantastic. This car is also specced with a 10 speed automatic transmission, although you can get a six speed manual, which is what I wish this car had. And we've got 418 pound feet of torque. That is in contrast to the two liter turbo four cylinder in the Volkswagen, which also has all wheel drive. That car is a six speed manual, although a seven speed DSG is an option. And it's got 315 horsepower, 295 pound feet of torque. So it's 171 horsepower down compared to the Mustang. But a couple things that it does have to its advantage. It is turbocharged and we're a mile above sea level. Turbocharging helps here with our thinner atmosphere. We're also on an unprepped surface, so all wheel drive is going to be to that car's credit. And it weighs 350 pounds less than this Mustang. So this could be an interesting race, especially off the line. I'm gonna race the Mustang in its drag strip mode. I have advanced track off because this car actually has really good traction and we're just going to see what it can do. You ready, Grant? Sure, I'm ready. Let's get this going. And racing against me today in the Volkswagen is one of our behind the scenes guys, Grant, who's a huge Volkswagen guy. He has a GTI and that's why we put him in the Golf R also because I want to be in the Mustang. Mustang, uh, it is a shocking thing to drive down the drag strip. I'll tell you that. Oh, 1602 and 97 miles an hour. Not all that good. You said it was a uh, 16? Yeah, 16.02, 97. Yeah, I had a pretty shocking 13.66 at 112 miles per hour, which here on an unprepped surface at a mile above sea level with a naturally aspirated rear wheel drive car is pretty impressive because we've seen cars here do well over a second slower than what they usually do at a regular drag strip. Let's just face it, Case, you have the magic foot today. Oh, uh, it helps a lot when you're racing an automatic, that makes it easier, but I'll tell you what, this being an automatic, We'll be at a slight disadvantage if we do a 30 mile per hour roll race where you can lock into a gear versus my transmission that I could shift manually, but I will let it work its own programming to downshift and race against you. So let's see if we get even slightly different results doing a roll race. For me. Yeah. 
So the Mustang is great in a straight line, but what about all the other things that it needs to do, like go down the road and be a comfortable car to sit in? Well, the seat comfort isn't bad, but I have to say that the interior of this car does leave a few things to be desired. For one, it's kind of a sea of black. There's not really any color in here, and the quality of these materials is definitely not on par with the other cars that we have here today. The design of it is not bad. It's a sharp interior, it looks good, and these screens look good. The touch points are good, the steering wheel feels good. So there are a lot of good things about it, but it feels a little bit like a rental car from the inside. And of course, there are back seats, but you're really not gonna do much with them. And now comes the part of the video where I demonstrate just how not that useful the back seat in this car is. For one, wow, do I really have to do that? That's a bummer. Uh, <laughs> it's not the easiest back seat to even open up getting into not a big opening and if we lean the seat back and put it where it should be there's just no way to make this look graceful and i can't even reach through this small opening to get the seat where it should be um, if the driver was where i would sit my knees would be into my chest and uh, my head is you know resting on the back glass so in a pinch you do have rear seats you could use them, but it's not really a good place for an adult to sit. In contrast, this Volkswagen has a very sharp, professional, grown-up looking interior. We've got much nicer materials, we've got nicer seats, they're stitched with the R logo, they look good, they're very supportive, this wheel is really pretty. Whether you like these capacitive touch buttons or not, you know, at least they look sharp. And the screens on this also look really good, although not quite as big as what you get in the Mustang. And the thing that goes the furthest for me is the fact that they've actually brought the body color into this interior. So it is mostly a black interior, but you have these blue highlights. You've got them on the seat, you've got them on the shifter, you've got them on the wheel, you've even got them down here on your floor mats. So Volkswagen in the past, also did very monochromatic interiors, but this one has just the right amount of color. Of course, this Volkswagen is a lot more usable just purely because of the fact that it has four doors. So it's a lot easier to get in the back seat. It's also a much bigger back seat, even though this front seat right now is all the way back because when you power the car on, then it slides forward to the position that you have it at. So at its all the way back setting, my knees are kind of touching and I'm about five foot 10 but once a driver gets in, powers on the car, it moves forward, I would have enough leg room and enough head room. So that makes this a much more usable car. Also the fact that this car is all wheel drive. So here in snow country, like we are in Colorado, you can drive it year round, which makes it a lot more usable. This is also a really good handling car. And as a backseat passenger, I've actually got quite a few amenities. I've got vents back here, I've got heated outboard seats, and I've got my cup holders. So as far as usability goes, there's really no comparison between these two. I'll go ahead and count us down just to start rolling, and we get on the throttle usually um, semi-aggressively so that we can try to be at 30 miles per hour a ways before the line. Roger that. And let's three, two, one, start rolling. There's 30. All right, we are at 30, no snows, and three, two, one, go. So he being locked into gear, definitely was able to jet ahead. He's actually, he's not falling behind as bad as I thought. shift it, you're not going to be able to outdrive a 171 horsepower deficit. Stay with me there for a second. 
yeah, for a second, I thought I was gonna have a race there and then you just kept going and going and going. Well, you know what? It's been proven time and time again, not just by us, but by everyone. At the end of the day, the numbers don't lie and that 171 horsepower difference is pretty visible. Yeah, that was, uh, that was an incredible display of American muscle. But those from across the continent aren't done yet. The Germans have one more vehicle to put in, so let's see how our next contender does against this Mustang. To shake things up a little bit, we brought in another German car, admittedly more expensive. This AMG C43 Mercedes costs around $72,600, so it's quite a bit more than these others, but it does have a good bit more power than the Volkswagen. Now any reasonable person at this point is probably thinking, yeah, the Mustang is real fast in a straight line, but what about on a twisty track? What about practicality? And that's something that I want to talk about in a moment, but this video is really just to illustrate how much straight line performance you can get out of a Mustang for this amount of money. This car is shockingly good at doing this exact thing. And these two cars don't compete at all. So we figured, why not put them next to each other on a track and just see what happens because that AMG is pretty quick. Like the Volkswagen, that Mercedes has a two liter turbo. This one, however, puts out 402 horsepower and 369 pound feet of torque through a nine speed automatic. It's also all wheel drive. And that is an incredible amount of power from a two liter, 400 horsepower. That is thanks in part to a hybrid system that that car has. And it's gonna be interesting to see how it does against this because both of these cars now are automatic, which takes the whole launching aspect out of the equation and shift times. That car does weigh a good bit more though. It's a couple hundred pounds heavier at 4,100 pounds. Your uh, solo DL running, Grant? Why, it sure is, Case. Then I think we're ready to do this drag race, and I am still in my drag strip mode, still with advanced track off. Do you have a sport mode there? I am in sport plus mode, and I'm turning my traction control off. All right, well, let's see how all-wheel drive, hybrid, turbo AMG does against some good old-fashioned rear-wheel drive V8 American power. time was a 13.66 and this time 13.64 so very consistent this Mustang run after run 117 111.7 so 0 0.2 off in trap speed and 0 0.02 off in the actual quarter time did almost exactly the same time but in the first run around um, as near as is possible I think as close as I've ever seen yeah, I got a uh, like 14.63 at 105. This is what these Mustangs are good at, right? Indeed they are, indeed they are. Well done. All right, let's see if there's any difference in a roll race. I do believe it would be a crime not to show the interior on this Mercedes because whereas the Volkswagen has a better interior than that Mustang, this Mercedes interior is on a completely different planet. We have these beautiful two-tone seats. It's two-tone on the door card, contrast stitching, 
the best looking screens of the bunch by far, these beautifully sculpted vents, this really cool steering wheel that also feels great in the hand, the dashboard trim, the materials are fantastic. This is a really good interior, no matter what way you look at it. All right, just like before, I will uh, get us going and then count us down and we'll let the cars do their thing, see if there's any difference. Sounds fun, let's do it. And three, two, one, rolling. All right, there is 30. And get a little nose to nose. And three, two, one, go. Oh, he shifted down faster than I did. I might not actually win this one. Yay, it's nice to be winning. Uh, that, was, that was close. So that transmission, that one definitely downshifted quicker. Your transmission definitely downshifted quicker than this. Yeah, I was much happier. All the turbos and hybrids were working in full concert at 30 miles an hour. Yeah, so from a dig, the displacement of this Mustang is hard to match as far as just sprinting off the line, but yeah, when it came to an actual roll race, it seemed like the Mercedes was a little quicker to get with the program, and uh, that was enough to keep it in front. With a long enough run out, I definitely would have caught you, but you definitely crossed the line before I did. I'll take it, man. I'll take it. It was fun to be in front, let me tell you. <laughs> For $46,000, you would be hard pressed to find a better performing car than the Mustang in a straight line. This is just a couple grand more than what a Ram 1500 starts at, and you're getting almost 500 horsepower. There's really no way to overstate how crazy that is. And because of some of the deals that were going on when we bought this car, we actually got this one for around 42. But all three of the cars that we had in this video today are all really good at different things. So let me know in the comments below, which of the cars that we drove today would you most wanna have in your own garage and why? And check out all the rest of our videos at alltfl.com. We'll see you in the next.